This instructional companion on zero force members falls under the major topic statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinate statics and indeterminate statics. The chapter on determinate statics covers topics such as force systems and vectors, distributed forces, equations of equilibrium, types of reactions, special members, which two force members uh, was an instructional companion there, determinacy, types of beams, free body diagrams, 2D equilibrium, which was the 2D frames uh, instructional companion, couples, hinges, pulleys, again another instructional companion, axial members, trusses, method of joints and sections, zero force members, which is the subject of this uh, instructional companion, catenary cables, and 3D equilibrium. Well, you might find uh, many different definitions for zero force members, uh, but this is the one that I like, and it sort of gives you the operational definition to solve problems. It says when uh, three members of a truss, which you remember contains only two force members, at least our ideal truss, are connected at a common pin or joint, uh, two different uh, names for that, and two of the members are collinear, uh, the definition in the MERM is the same line of action, this line of action, then the force in the third member must be zero. Now note, this zero force member cannot be removed as it's needed for the stability of the truss, especially in some other loading. This particular pin or joint may not have any load uh, for this uh, loading situation, but for another it might very well be. Uh, a lot of times folks say, well, you find a zero force member, you can take it out. Well, it's sort of there to start with, and uh, just for this particular loading, it happens to be uh, zero. Now, in the MERM, uh, there's the following figure uh, here, where you have three members uh, coming in at a pin or a joint. Uh, the problem here is that uh, this, uh, while it's not stated, uh, this uh, looks uh, perpendicular. It looks perpendicular and does, in fact, um, confuse people. Okay, But it is indeed a, a zero force member. This third member, let me get an M in there, zero force member, these two are collinear, they have the same line of action, so the third member as the uh, definition that I provided, uh, that third member uh, is zero. But thing is, uh, it looks perpendicular, but it doesn't have to be. But there's another picture also in the MERM. Also in the MERM is a little picture uh, like this where just two members, that's sort of a special case of the zero force member uh, definition. If you have just two uh, members coming together at a pin and there's no load there, then both of the members are zero force members. And again, uh, those members cannot be taken out. They're there for stability of the truss or for future loadings. Uh, if they weren't needed, uh, they wouldn't have been there in the first place. But again, a lot of folks think you find a zero force member, we can take it out. Well, that might be, but that's not the purpose of finding a zero force member uh, with that. Okay? However, uh, I, I see uh, the following generalization. What I like to do in my um, uh, instruction is to generalize this particular three-member uh, connection uh, and say that it doesn't really matter what that angle is, whatever the angle is, any angle, uh, this becomes a zero force member. So the fact that it uh, looks 90 degrees in the MERM um, has thrown people off to think that uh, that's all that uh, that can be a zero force member. And usually in a truss, um, I'm going to move this around. Uh, usually what you see in a truss is you see two members, two members horizontal, and one comes off at uh, at 90 degrees, and uh, that sort of uh, sort of the ob an obvious one. Okay, uh, that's how you sort of see that. Now, the last uh, textbook that I used uh, when I taught statics for the Civil Engineering Department a few years back uh, in, um, in, at NC State, uh, the textbook uh, labeled these, and I kind of like that uh, label. Uh, they referred to, uh, to this one as a type 
one because it was uh, the ni 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle um, assumption. Yes, it's 90 degrees. That's an easy one to see. People pick out uh, three members coming in at 90 degrees. It's specified. They referred to this one as a type two because it was at an angle and um, as I've discovered in my class, uh, again people first looking at the MERM think it's only 90. Well the generalization is really type two. Well uh, there's actually a type three. Okay, and type three is where uh, four members are actually coming together. And so therefore, uh, the rule of three forces coming together sort of uh, takes, takes over in a way. Uh, however, as um, the um, sentence over here, rather long sentence, my wife says I always have too long a sentences, but uh, I think engineers do that a lot. It says, if either of these two members are determined to be a zero force member due to how it's connected at the other end, uh, the other end of either this one or this one goes in 90 degrees to another um, set of two to um, members or this one goes at an angle into another but somehow one of the two uh, becomes a zero force member which you know while you can't take it out you can imagine that it's out well if that member is out then well we've got a type two right so uh, that's why this one's called a type three I kinda like that one two and three um, then the other member is clearly a non force a zero force member uh, as well okay. so really uh, in the um, MEPE exam, and this of course be a great problem for the FE as well, uh, is identifying, uh, give you a trust, identify uh, zero, zero force members, find out whether uh, folks know the, uh, the fact of the three types, or the three, it's not really important to have the three types, but to know that um, you indeed can have either the uh, uh, type one coming up with a perpendicular uh, angle or type two where there's any angle or as in this case you have two coming in but you determine one of the others is um, is zero so therefore that one zero as well and again you can't take them out uh, they are there for the stability of the truss for other loadings again this uh, we're making the assumption here that there is no load if there's any load at the pin that we're in uh, looking at all bets are off no zero force members I don't care what the what the that maybe the other end maybe make something uh, zero but uh, uh, all bets are off there if there's a load at that uh, at that pin okay well Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations and plan of study, www.drtomsclassroom.com.